Hi guys, welcome to today's lesson. We'll be looking at the first uh, chapter or the first topic um, of area and volume, um, which is chapter two in the textbook that we're looking at at the moment. Um, this is called um, MM4, so measurement for uh, further applications of area and volume. So to start off with, we're going to be re recapping over area of circles, annuluses, and sectors, um, of which you've done all before. Okay, this is pretty much just revision. The only one that you might not be too familiar with is the annulus. And remember, for the most part, these formulas are on that formula sheet that you have, are given in examinations. So make sure when you're doing these questions, you have that available to you. Um, the main ones you should be uh, sort of familiar with, um, certainly your circle for area, which is your pi times your radius squared. Uh, sometimes you might need to know your circumference as well, which is our 2 pi r. Um, that may be needed at some point. I'm not particularly sure on these questions. Um, the other thing with circles, you would need to be familiar with your sector, which is a part circle. And you can see here the formula is your theta over 360, where theta is whatever angle you're given. Um, and then we're simply timesing that by the pi r squared again, because it's the fraction of circle that you're given. To be honest with you, you don't need to remember semicircle and quadrant, because a semicircle is 180 over 360, hence why it's a half, and the quadrant is 90 over 360, hence why it's a quarter. You should know those already. The one that you might not be too familiar with is the formula for the annulus. Okay, so you might ask what is an annulus, and you can look in the diagram, and it's kind of like a donut shape. So an annulus is where you're given one circle, and then you're given another circle with the same radius, okay, and you're asked to find the area of, I guess, that donut shape. Now, for the most part, what you might be doing, and this is what you sort of, you sort of learn to do in year 8 and 9 and 10, is you often do pi times the big radius squared, so that's the area of the big circle, and we subtract pi times the radius of the little circle. And what you can see this formula they give you here is pretty much they just factorize the pi out and do r squared minus little r squared. It's just another way that you can do the formula, um, but for most part, people choose to do this way. However, if you've got the formula in front of you, you might as well use it, right? So let's have a look at a couple of questions. Um, the first one says, find the area of a circle. So again, this is really easy stuff. This is going back to sort of year seven. Pi times, now the radius is nine, so it's just nine squared. Now, if they ask for the exact value, okay, because this is important, the exact value means that we're not going to be using pi in our calculator because the minute you press pi in your calculator, um, it's going to be a decimal rounding. So for my exact value, I just do 9 squared is 81 and leave it as 81 pi centimeters squared because it's in, oh, actually, so it's in meters, isn't it? So I should look at that, um, meters squared. Now, for the most part, however, it might say one decimal place or two decimal places. To one decimal place, it'd be 254.5 meters squared. So pretty easy stuff there for that first question. The second question Thomas draws two concentric circles. So what does concentric circles mean? Well, this is referring to the annulus, where you have the circle with a same radius. Okay, well, not same radius, sorry, a same center. So you can see both of these circles, they're not best circles drawn out, are they? Um, they have the same center. So we've got two circles, and the one radius is going to be four centimeters, and the other radius is going to be six centimeters. So it's asking for the, um, the area of the annulus, which is that donut shape that I just spoke about. So again, you've got two possibilities. Um, the old way, again, a lot of you will do this, will say pi times six squared, and then you subtract pi times four squared. If you use the formula, you might do pi brackets six squared take away four squared. That's using the annulus formula. It doesn't actually matter which way you do it, folks, because it's gonna generate the exact same answer anyway. Um, but certainly, if you do the second way, just make sure you put those brackets in because that will change the answer if you don't put the brackets in. So um, we're gonna have an approximate answer of 62 point, I'm gonna do two decimal places this time, 83, 
um, actually 83185 and this is centimeters squared now the question I just want to make sure I answer the question what is the area of annuals to the nearest square centimeter well that means the nearest whole number so 63 centimeters squared always important to go back and read that initial question okay um, the next question find the angle at the center to the nearest degree for these sectors. All right, so this is a bit more challenging question. So I'm gonna draw a sector up. Again, I don't know how big the sector is gonna be, but I'm just gonna give an example of a sector that's part of a circle. Um, we're told in this case that the area is 104.72 uh, centimeters squared, and we're told that it has a radius of 10 centimeters. And what it's asking is, is for the angle at the center. So this is a slightly more challenging question. So how would I start off? Well, first of all, I'll get my formula sheet out and go, okay, there is a formula for the area of a sector there. That area is theta over 360 times pi r squared. And it's really, realistically, this is just an algebra question um, where you're putting in values and then trying to find the unknown. So in this particular question, we're told what a is. We are told what the radius is but we are trying to find out the value of that angle theta. So I'm going to substitute in 104.72 equals theta over 360. Remember, theta is just like an X or a Y or a Z, but it's uh, specifically for an angle. And now I've got pi times 10 squared. Okay, so that's my first line, and I'd have to see that there, guys. That's certainly a mark there. Now, the next stage is I'm trying to isolate. I'm just going to do it in a different color. Um, I'm trying to isolate, uh, it wasn't really a different color, was it? I might do it in purple, that theta there. So that's what I'm trying to get by itself. So I need to work the other uh, letters over, or so the other numbers, the 360, the pi, and the 10 squared. Some people might do this a little bit differently. Um, certainly for me, the first thing I'll be doing is we've got a divide by 360. I'm going to times by 360. So I'm going to do 104.72 times 360. That leaves me with theta times pi times, and I might as well do 100 there because that's what 10 squared is. And then the last step I'm going to do, and again, I could put that into my calculator and get the answer. I'm not going to bother just yet. Remember, I want to get this theta by itself. So I've got times pi times 100. Well, what's the t opposite of times pi times 100? Well, we should know it's all divide because the opposite of, div of times is divide. So I'm going to do that in one hit. I'm going to divide the whole thing by 100 pi. Now that's just 100 times pi, okay? Or you could do divide it by 100 times pi or pi times 100. doesn't matter exactly how you do that. Theta equals, and now it's a simple matter of typing those numbers into your calculator, making sure that if you are doing it in one hit, you need to do the entire thing um, divided by 100 pi. So just make sure you do your fraction key there. Um, either way, I get theta equals 120 degrees. Um, now, it doesn't say to the nearest minute, but actually it'd be to, to zero minutes anyway. Um, but I get theta equals 120 degrees as my answer. Now, I'm going to go back, double check my question, find the angle at the center. Okay, that's correct. I've done that. And you know what? I'm just going to double check that my answer is correct. So how do I do that? Well, if I plug my theta back in, my 120 over 360 times pi times 10 squared, my answer should be 104.72. So it's a good idea to check that just to make sure you're, you're right. Because if you're not right, then you can go back and try to find your mistake. Um, but remember too that you've rounded to 120, so it won't be exactly what you had there, but it should be pretty close. I did that and I got 104.7. Uh, 7, 2, in fact, which is pretty much exactly what they had in, the, had in the question. So I know I'm correct. I know that's my answer. I can move on to that next question. Okay, that's pretty much it for your uh, area of circles, annuluses, and sectors. It's pretty straightforward. Um, this now correlates with exercise 2A in your textbook. Please go ahead and do those questions. Make sure you can do all of them, particularly the written questions towards the end of the the uh, the, the, the chapter or the um, the exercise, because they get a little bit hairy because there are no diagrams given. You need to come up with those diagrams, and some of them will then apply questions such as, um, you know, I want to carpet the circular area and it cost me. 
ten dollars fifty per square meter and then you have to have those few added on questions those applied questions so please make sure you do all the questions particularly ones at the end any problems let me know um, I hope you're having a, a great day and look forward to the next lesson thank you